My name is Jan Willem Blanket. I worked uh, in Jakarta on EU ASEAN relations from uh, quite a couple of years ago. Uh, at the moment, I am with the EU Asia Center, but above all, I'm preparing an update of my book about China of, in the meantime, 12 years ago. And I think China is a very pressing subject. People in EU embassies who followed ASEAN a bit from the corner of the eye. I had organized with them a, a, a monthly sort of update on progress with ASEAN where, where we stood. The skepticism they had, and I uh, thought, yeah, will they ever get anywhere? I stayed optimistic. I was an advocate of ASEAN in Brussels, where there was quite some skepticism. I mean, the EU should bet know better because they know that integration is not so easy. But they could very often shake their, uh, their heads and say, well, why do they not get their act together? And um, I was in close contact with them yeah, on a daily basis, so I, I could explain what, what the issues were. And also, let me stress the political uh, importance that I saw in them and that I think is the West is still insufficiently aware. It must have been 2012 that ASEAN proposed to um, the, the European Union a strategic partnership. Um, I was fully behind it and promoted it in Brussels, lobbied for it. Uh, but Brussels didn't find it time yet to, to put ASEAN in the same category as, well, with whoever they have strategic partnerships. If it's 20, finally we got it. I don't see it as my achievement, but I've been a belief and lobbying for it all the time and perhaps put a little seed in the ground that is today then at least has come to, to full blessing. Uh, I praise ASEAN for its outward uh, looking attitude, how it uh, has managed to deal with uh, how to establish the East Asia Summit, uh, how it brings these people together, how Russia and America, and, and, and at least China, how they sit together in this ASEAN-driven meeting. I, I think that deserves great respect and perhaps is a more important factor than we are aware of, of stability and peace and coherence in Asia and how especially ASEAN deals with China. It's not easy, but it manages. I, I would like to hear a bit more from the region than I, than I do today. ASEAN had, had the right approach of caution, but determination, but no confrontation with China. And I think Western countries who now are fairly confrontational with China could learn from that perhaps. That's perhaps something for, for the, the future generation to really see and take perhaps even ASEAN in the lead for its approach towards China and make it less confrontational. I immediately saw the importance of the arrival of the Committee of Permanent Representatives, which was first again mentioned in this ASEAN Charter. ASEAN stepped up with the ASEAN Charter, its presence, but, but also its uh, legal, it became a more legal entity, uh, therefore got ambassadors to ASEAN and also um, like the European Union had from, from a very early stage, a committee of permanent representatives, meaning um, ambassadors, representatives of the ASEAN countries being present in Jakarta with the ASEAN head, headquarters, with the ASEAN secretariat to represent their countries clearly in ASEAN headquarters and being there as a group to talk with or individually they have never become as important decision makers as the Committee of Permanent Representatives is in the EU, but they were an extremely useful group. They were a fantastic group to work with. They were the ASEAN devoted people like I was in the EU delegation. We have 
great cooperation. We established a lot of things, but I have always worked with the great people in the delegation. I mean, I worked very closely with the press department uh, and it was never something like, yeah, but you are only ASEAN. I was part of the family.